Removing tree stumps without the use of a grinder can be a challenge if you don't have the right tools. In this video, we will use three different methods to remove tree stumps, starting with the most primitive and progressing to more advanced methods. Unfortunately, we encountered a slight hazard along the way. Whoa, stop! Before we start moving some tree stumps, we must first separate the tree from the stump. I am planning to remove these six trees in the front yard because they were initially planted too close together by the previous owners. As a result, there is too much shade and the grass below cannot grow nice and thick. Also, most of these trees are past their prime and pose a hazard to the home next to it. Since these trees are on the property line, technically the neighbor also owns these trees. Of course, we asked, so while we have their blessing, we'll want to act fast before they change their mind. Also, we intend to plant a young live oak and want that tree to get as much sunlight and grow outward uninterrupted so it can be big and shapely like his big brother on the other side of the yard. The first method we tried was digging, but we'll start by topping the tree first. Now time to dig. This is by far the most labor intensive method of removing stumps. We primarily use sharpshooter shovels to dig and axes to hack away at the roots. This stump is deceptively large. So to lighten the load, we split the stump by first making a cut through the middle and then following up with a bottle jack. We notched one side of the tree to give the jack a better bite. Once the jack was fully extended, we wedged some wood between the two stump pieces so we could remove the jack and extend the height. A cool feature with these bottle jacks is that most of them have a threaded extension built in. These jacks might be small, but they are mighty. This one is rated for 12 tons or 24,000 pounds. With the stump a little more manageable, we'll dig a little more and then remove some of the parts sticking out so we can easily roll this stump. Now, time to fill that hole. So that was a lot of work. I think this next go around, we will leverage a little bit of physics to remove the stump. We ended up getting this American made winch by Wythe Scott as the mechanism to apply the force. We also bought some straps, a tow rope, some snatch blocks, and some shackles so that we can amplify the force. The straps will go around the tree and our anchor point, and the snatch blocks will be attached to the straps with these shackles. Snatch blocks work great at redirecting force, and when set up correctly, they can amplify the force applied on a load. Though it does make it easier to move the stumps, it comes at the expense of increasing the distance the working line needs to travel. Not sure if that's entirely clear, but we'll demonstrate it later in the video. Now that we got our equipment, we will begin to top the tree, but being sure to leave it a little tall to add even more leverage. Next, we dig about a foot deep around the base to expose and cut out the major lateral roots. Once we have the large roots cut out, we attach a strap as high as possible in the tree. We also anchor the winch to the base of a nearby tree, which we also intend to remove. Our first setup here did not work because we only had one snatch block in the system, which was not enough. It was simply too difficult to crank. The next rig we set up had a total of two snatch blocks, which drastically helped. A great feature about this pulley is that you can attach a shackle and snatch block directly to the frame of the winch, as well as the hook at the end of the rope. This winch also comes with its own tackle block hook, similar to a snatch block. However, we did not end up using since our rope was too big. In fact, it was almost too big for the snatch blocks we used. The tackle box is really only designed to handle ropes that are 5 16 in thickness like the winch rope. The rope we are using is more than double that size. Now, time to crank, and crank a lot. Some things to consider with a setup like this is that you need an anchor point relatively close to the tree you want to remove. Another thing is that we connected the tow rope to the hook of the winch with a knot. And once that knot reaches the winch, we have to reset the whole system by retying a new knot in the rope. I'm no rock climber, but I do know there are devices out there to capture progress in a pulley system like a Prusik. Unfortunately, we did not end up using a device like that, which could have saved us some time. Instead, we had to release the tension so we could tie another knot further down the rope. Eventually, we were able to lay this tree down. And why yes, this is the chainsaw we used for the hardcore pruning, which is not really designed for bucking or making crosscuts in this size of a log. I am thoroughly impressed with this little chainsaw. Since that worked relatively well, we wanted to give that method one more shot. This time, we weren't going to top the tree. So we grabbed our tallest ladder and put a strap as high as we could in the tree. Fortunately, our tow rope is 200 feet long because our anchor tree was on the other side of the yard. Though this was the smallest tree out of the group, we still ended up doing a little digging to remove the larger roots. 
Okay, so using the winch seems to work pretty good, but let's change manpower for horsepower. First, we'll start by topping the tree. So these next few trees were a little closer to the neighbor's property and had grown through their gas line. So we had to be extra cautious while cutting out these roots. We also wanted to make sure the roots near the pipe were completely cut away so the gas line wouldn't be pulled out of the ground alongside the stump. We knew where the gas line was because we called out the utility company prior to cutting these trees down to flag the yard because we were planning to lay some pipe to connect the house, which is currently on septic, to the city sewer. While they were out flagging our yard, we asked about the small section of our neighbor's yard where the trees were. A couple things to consider with a setup like this is that not only do you need a solid anchor point relative to what you are pulling, but you also need a road or unobstructed path where you can drive. We also protected our anchor point, which was a nicely shaped Chinese pistache tree with some packing blankets around the base. Since this looks like a web of confusion, I highlighted the rope to illustrate the setup. To anchor the rope, we put a strap around the base of the pistache tree and added a knot in the rope, and then connected the two with a shackle. Then, the rope travels up to a snatch block attached to the top of the stump with another strap and shackle. Then, back down to another snatch block on the same strap as the anchor line. This line then travels back up to the stump to another snatch block, then back down to another snatch block that is anchored with its own strap. This last snatch block we angled more toward the road in the direction we would be driving. We then tie off the rope to the hitch on the truck. Before I punched it, I made sure to take the slack out of the rope slowly. I put the truck in drive and just let it creep forward. Once the vehicle stopped progressing, I started giving it some gas. I did end up stopping about halfway to make sure we didn't damage the gas line. Since we had paused the pulling, we retied the knot in the rope so we could move the truck back closer to the anchor point. This was far overdue, but we finally got a bigger chainsaw. And this one is a hoss. We are getting down to the last couple of trees. We will use the same method as last time, starting by topping the tree. We did a little bit of digging and root extraction as well. Fortunately, this tree was further away from the gas line compared to the last. Now that the vertical log has been prepped, we will wrap the straps as high as we can. I'm sure glad we got the size rope that we did because every loop we add in the system drastically increases the amount of rope we need. We are using a 200 foot long, three quarter inch, double braided polyester pelican rope. This rope is designed for low stretch applications like rigging for trees and towing and is rated for 21,000 pounds. Before I start to lay this stump horizontal, I tighten the rope by putting the truck in drive and letting it creep forward before giving it some gas. Take note on how far the truck has to travel compared to how far the stump has moved. This new chainsaw is one of Echo's bigger units, and it will sure rip through some wood and your legs if you're not careful. Next investment, I think, is going to be in some safety equipment because these shorts are not stopping a chainsaw. Moving on to the last tree. Unfortunately, we were about to experience the most heartbreaking situation since starting this channel. This tree was by far the most dangerous due to its sheer size. These tree limbs were some real widow makers, but we had quite a few lucky bounces. Being experienced amateurs, we are fairly comfortable with this activity. But on a serious note, delimbing trees on a ladder like this can be a very dangerous sport. Falling tree branches can be detrimental to your health. After dodging those widow makers, we proceeded to dig. We used blunt hand tools while digging near the pipe. Most of this digging was done off camera. Needless to say, this took a lot of time, but we wanted to be extra cautious and make sure no roots were near or attached to the gas line prior to pulling. For the big root above the gas line, we cut away small sections at a time. Once we got closer to the pipe, we could approximately gauge where it was. And 
make cuts on either side of the root with an electric chainsaw. We were eventually able to pop out the last bit with a shovel. Obviously, we were a little nervous at this part because hitting the gas line could result in some serious consequences. With the gas line exposed, we moved on to the other side of the tree. If it weren't for this gas pipe, I don't think we would have dug as much and removed as many roots. The amount of roots in this tree was astonishing. It just kept going and going and going and going and going and going. And right before we began to turn this vertical log horizontal, the most unfortunate event happened. The camera stopped recording. Fortunately, the old man was shooting from the hip. So this was the only shot. Yeah, you're good, it's moving. Whoa, stop. Unless you were looking for a workout, I don't think I'd recommend the digging method, especially if you have multiple stumps. Using the pulley and rope was a lot easier on the old back. However, it does require a number of different pieces of equipment. For those that are interested in other methods of disappearing stumps, check out our other video where we use fire to remove a stump in my backyard. Fortunately, there is no gas line underneath this stump.